Hey everybody, what's up? Welcome to part three of how to price your art. And like I mentioned in the first two videos, this video will be about negotiations. And I've also decided to add, um, uh, um, think, think, think. <laughs> oh, tier brackets. So basically, I'm going to go over why you should have different different um, brackets of price ranges. So first, let's talk about negotiating. Now, negotiating is an entirely, entirely optional thing you can do. Um, me personally, just from personal experience, I would strongly advise being open to negotiating. Um, some artists do not want to negotiate their prices. Their prices are what they are, period, in the story. Take it or leave it. You know, and if that's you, that's perfectly fine. Um, other, um, a lot of other artists, such as myself, I am definitely open to negotiate, negotiating prices in certain cases. Um, Primarily like art shows, art first, that type of thing. That's when I'm most likely to most likely to um, negotiate a price. Sometimes if I have somebody that's buying a piece from out of state, um, depending on what the shipping will cost me and depending on just depending on who it is, I may be willing to ne to negotiate or take just a little bit off the price, just um, just for the sake of closing out the sale. So I don't think there's really <clears throat> a universal way to negotiate. Um, in my personal experience, I found that it's primarily something you play by ear but I also want to have a minimum that that you're willing to discount or you know ha have an idea of how low you're willing to go with your negotiations maybe for example maybe you're only willing to take ten dollars off the price or maybe twenty dollars off the price or maybe someone has to buy um, two, two pieces of your work in order for you to be willing to negotiate a discount. So, um, yeah, negotiates, negotiating, it's, it's just one of those things, you know, um, like I said, I don't think there is one universal way to do it. Um, and you don't have to do it if you don't want to. Um, the one time I pretty much don't negotiate is mainly on commissions because a commission it, my commission prices are pretty set you know and they're going to be a little bit higher than my pre-existing gallery so my my commissions could run anywhere from a dollar twenty five a dollar fifty a square inch whereas my pre existing gallery is usually right around a dollar a square um square inch and some sometimes I'm willing to negotiate prices um on a pre existing gallery but but the commission again my commission prices those are preset you know so it's almost take it or leave it this is what I'm charging for this do or don't <laughs> um, <clears throat> I, I think there are some things that I've learned to be aware of when negotiating prices too and I learned this firsthand from my uh, from my assistant Tyra McGill who who like in the 2019 at the 2019 um let them eat art festival in here in st louis well actually it's in maplewood but it's part of st louis county anyway and at that art festival 
um, I did so well and I totally credit my assistant Tyra Tyra McGill for uh, for the success star because she killed it um, she could pick up on what someone liked about a particular painting she can hone in on that and and follow all the way through on that and when they were ready to purchase she she could negotiate like that um, not everybody has that I certainly I certainly don't because I did that very same art festival the year before and sold practically nothing <laughs> um, I think I only sold a couple of pieces the year before but Tyra McGill she's also an art lover she's um, a neo soul vocalist she's an um, she's an herbalist entrepreneur so she knows the importance of being able to negotiate uh, with potential clients and customers and so forth so you know you gotta when you're nego uh, negotiating like I said um, one just kinda keep in mind how far you're willing to go and if you have that threshold you know don't pass it you know um, stick to it hold to it um, it's <clears throat> I think it's always a good thing to be open to negotiating. It's something that's totally optional, um, so it, it's entirely up to um, up to you, whether you want to or whether you want to or not. Uh, think about, and if you decide to, there's then you can also think about under what circumstances, maybe. If your work is in a gallery, you're not going to negotiate your gallery prices. Or you can be like me and not negotiate your commission prices. Um, so think of, you know, things like that. And again, going back to the example with the um, two, two pieces, maybe someone has to buy two pieces of your work in order for you to negotiate with them. Um, but the other thing... Uh, the other thing you should keep in mind is that and this is probably the most important thing really is that you want to be fair to yourself and your customer so that that's the main thing so you can't get like ridiculous with it um, so yeah that's all I got on <laughs> negotiating um, like I said, it, it's really not a whole lot there, and I'm trying to see that timer. Um, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I might need glasses or something. I don't know. Okay. Tear brackets. Why is it important to have different tear brackets? This goes back to the 2019 the 2019 let them eat art festival that I talked about during negotiating another huge reason I was highly successful at that at that festival other than the fact that my assistant Ty, uh, Tyra McGill is an amazing negotiator and salesperson the other <clears throat> the other thing that allowed me to do so well is I had different brackets. My newer and bigger pieces were more expensive. Um, the, the, I guess you can say my pre-existing gallery and not so big pieces, those were like those the pricing for those were in the middle that's the middle ground and then the old pre-existing stuff you know that old stuff that you're just tired of looking at you know you just wish you can do something with it but you don't quite want to throw away your work so you just hide it in a closet or something that's those were the cheapest you know um that's what i call my bargain crate and those were like probably fifty dollars or less um so my bargain crate was like 
fifty dollars or less, maybe even twenty five dollars or less. I be honest, I really can't remember. But it's, those paintings were really cheap. This is the bottom line. So I'm just gonna save fifty for the sake of the video. So my bottom tier was like fifty dollars or less. My middle tier could be anywhere from maybe let's say a hundred to two hundred you know and my top tier my most expensive so it could be 200 and up you know um and then of course i offer deals i negotiated deals and bargains if someone purchased more than one painting you know so maybe somebody purchased something from the bargain crate and something from the middle tier so okay and maybe instead of them spending 150 dollars maybe they spent a hundred dollars or you know whatever but <clears throat> the point is there was people buying <clears throat> from each each tier which in the long run allowed me to have more sales versus if I had priced everything at let's say my commission commission rate prices or let's say if I had priced everything at my top tier prices I probably wouldn't have got nowhere near the sales um, the sales that I did so having a tier having a tier bracket allows you to reach out to your different level shoppers you got the shoppers that don't want to spend a whole lot you know they only want to spend a little um a little bit of money that's your bottom tier you got some some that's going to spend a little bit more you know that's your military your middle tier and then you got some that don't mind spending who maybe they're just avid art lovers and appreciate uh, truly appreciate art and they know and understand the value of an original piece of artwork from an aspiring artist and so they don't mind spending that top tier money but having those again I can't stress it enough having different tier brackets um, opens the door for you to sell a lot more so don't be so set on just having one one way of pricing uh, pricing your work um, or one bracket should I say uh, because that'll kill you and I know from personal experience um, so from that point on from 2019 on up i've always tried to incorporate different tiers uh different tiers so um <clears throat> i think that will just about cover it but i think i'm going to do one more uh video for this series and i might go ahead and call it a wrap originally i had planned on doing three only three videos but as i started doing the videos more ideas um more ideas about pricing artwork such as the tier brackets and such as commissions came to me um came to me and i'm like okay well maybe i should cover those so i might do one more um i probably more than likely i am going to do one more so that would be part four and that would be commissions um commissions and why it's a good idea to have contracts so don't miss that one please uh um yeah so stay tuned for the next video uh, for this series and then i'm also uploading new art so don't go anywhere oh um check out my new channel it's not just my channel it's actually the the SWAT SWAC book series channel and SWAC is an acronym for Shadow Within the City 
So it's the Shadow Within the City book series um, YouTube channel. I am one of the co-authors and one of the artists uh, for that series. So go check out SWAC S W A C book series. Go subscribe to that channel right after this video, which is like right now. But first sub to my video. First sub sub to my channel. And then go go sub SWAT book series. Alright, see you in the next video. Deuces.